Hello, this is Borna from Borna.tv and I'm going to continue to talk about the Worldwide Developers Conference Keynote and the purpose of this video is I'm going to talk about the new features of the iPhone 2.0 uh, software. Now there are several components to all these videos. I talked about the enterprise support, talked about the SDK. Um, and so now I'm going to talk about some of the new features that were demonstrated from the Keynote by Steve Jobs. The first thing is contact search. So I'm going to get my iPhone over here. Contact search allows one to search your contacts on the iPhone. So currently on the iPhone when you bring up the contacts list um, you can only skip to a certain letter. Uh, on the right side there is, let me bring up my contact list here so you guys can see. Let's see over here on the right side there's a list of, uh, of, of, of uh, letters that you can uh, tap on and by instantly tapping on those letters it will jump to the person's name on the iPhone. Uh, unfortunately if you have a really long list and a lot of names that can be a cumbersome way of going about it so Apple has refined this by adding contact search so there will be a search bar at the top you can begin typing someone's name and it will bring up the contact so that was something that was needed definitely especially if you have a, a large contact list next thing is full iWork and MS Office document support on the iPhone currently on the iPhone if you view an email attachment that's a Word document or a PowerPoint no a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet you can view it uh, you can view that document natively right on the iPhone it looks very well it looks better than Windows mobile devices so they have expanded that to MS PowerPoint presentations and also iWork documents which include pages, keynote, and numbers documents. So you can view those documents right on your iPhone, very rich interface, very good previewing. So I think that's a great addition as well. Um, bulk delete email. This is also a welcome addition. So if you got a lot of email messages that you go through daily and you don't want to go through one by one and delete the ones you don't want to see, you can just use this bulk delete uh, feature to select multiple messages and delete at once. That's something that should have been there from day one if you ask me, but they've added it. Uh, from email, you can save images to your photo library. So that, that's been confirmed. So if you get an email attachment of a picture and you want to save it to your, uh, your photo library, you can. That's going to be cool for iPhone backgrounds. So um, background sites are probably going to have an email mechanism. If, now only if, if the, uh, if the Safari feature is gone. Now, in the beta versions that are floating around, the Safari browser has an option to save images from web pages to your library as well. So if they keep that in there, you know, the email functionality will just augment it, but you know, we'll see. Scientific calculator, this is cool. The calculator application on the iPhone, um, currently it's a standard calculator, but on the new version, if you flip it to the side, there's gonna be a scientific calculator, have the sine, cosine, tangent, uh, square root, all those cool things. Uh, parental controls, so you're going to be able to control iTunes purchases and Wi-Fi purchases and other stuff like that. Languages, this is cool. Japanese, Chinese, simplified and traditional and a cool feature that they're adding with character recognition. So you'll be able to actually draw the Chinese characters on the iPhone and it'll, it'll recognize it. Gotta wonder how accurate it's going to be though. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit and uh, go over to the App Store because the App Store got some some information that was uh, brought to light as well. Uh, if you don't recall, the App Store was uh, first announced in March, and uh, Steve Jobs said that you know this is going to be mechanisms for developers to distribute their applications to us users. Now you can even you can even charge for your applications, and Apple will take care of all the credit card fees and everything. I believe there's a one-time fee. Uh, or a yearly fee of $100 a year for the developers. But some cool news came out that there's going to be no charge to developers if they don't charge for their apps. So if you want to put an app on the iTunes store, you don't want to charge for it, Apple's not going to charge you. So I think that's a good thing to do. Um, they're going to be going from 23 countries support with the iTunes app store up to 62 countries. And I think that's going to be very good. 10 megabyte apps are going to be able to be downloaded from cellular Wi-Fi and iTunes. So you're going to be able to download less than 10 megabyte app, 10 megabytes or less on any way you can get to the net. But if your application is over 10 megabytes, you can only use Wi-Fi 
and iTunes. And I wonder if this is something to do with AT&T and them wanting to uh, implement bandwidth limitations and not you know, do a whole lot. But I don't know, 10 megabytes goes pretty fast on a 3G network. I don't know why they put that in there. Uh, enhancing for enterprise to distribute apps. So uh, basically they got feedback from the enterprise market. I talked about enterprise already, but they got feedback that enterprises may want to push out their own custom applications only to certain phones. So this is something that's going to be absolutely flexible. You know, it's going to add a lot of flexibility to the enterprise market. If they want to do custom applications, they want to deploy them, they can use a uh, enterprise deploy mechanism and you could distribute them on your internet they're also going to have a new mechanism called ad hoc distribution so if you want in a classroom situation as the example they use if you want to distribute an application to your students and you want to use them on their hundred iPhones there's a hundred iPhone limitation Apple has an ad hoc distribution where they, they will expand your developer license to a hundred iPhones rather than I think the current one is one or two iPhones so you gotta get recertified for this ad hoc distribution if you want to set up like a, a beta that'd be something that's cool for a beta or alpha so if you want to beta test your applications before you deploy them you can come up with this ad hoc distribution and actually host the application on your website and they can be able to download it locally and sync through iTunes so it's no there's no over-the-air sync for these it's gonna to have to go through iTunes and um, so these apps can be mailed or posted anywhere. so that's that's all the the new features that I saw that Steve Jobs uh, that he demonstrated uh, one of the things the things that I'm most excited about are the uh, are the uh, contact search and the uh, and the bulk delete email those are the ones that affect me the most uh, those are the ones I use the most and uh, but the other things the App Store additions are going to be cool I'm, I'm happy for the developers if they don't want to charge for their app they're not going to get charged by Apple so those are just some of the things all right that concludes this dem this demonstration that concludes this video of uh, WWDC 2008 of the new features of the iPhone software 2.0